Last night was Joe Biden's big boy press conference. Now, you might be telling yourself or asking yourself, boy, I would not have called it that, given all the jokes about him and diapers and things of that. But that's what the Democrats did. Uh, They thought, hey, we're going to call it his big boy press conference. And boy, was it big. Big in terms of full of hilarious gaffes. Gaffes in which he called the president of Ukraine, Putin, where he called Donald Trump his vice president. And we've now seen a deluge of Democrat donors, nearly $100 million, uh, being held back, allegedly. Allegedly. Donors to a pro-Biden super PAC are said to be withholding their money. So the New York Times this morning printed this article. Donors to pro-Biden super PAC are said to be withholding roughly $90 million. The decision to withhold such an enormous amount of money is one of the most concrete examples of the fallout from the President Biden's poor debate performance at the end of June. I mean, what would you do? You know, like... You know, it's like it's like if you had the opportunity to, you know, cancel a bet, <laughs> you know, cancel a bet that you had made when you knew the game, if you had advanced knowledge of knowing that the game they, they, he was going to lose. I mean, they clearly think he's going to lose. They would not have pulled their money if they thought he was going to win. A lot of people. $100 million in donations being held. That's absolutely bonkers. You can see a lot of that, you know. Trump has proven to be sufficient. Uh, the establishment is the enemy of the people. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's Candace Owen, so there's a lot of uh, noticing going on in her replies. That's a lot of money to lose for any president. You know, that's a lo- that's a lot of money. If you had the chance, though, like you knew you had made a terrible bet, and you could cancel. I suspect that they're going to want to do that uh, and by, you know, try to retain as much money as they possibly can for the next guy. You know, so they can fund Gavin Newsom or whatever they want to run in 2028. I would want my money back. Because in my opinion, when, when it's that much money, there's obviously some sort of quid pro quo going on. It's just my opinion. I'm not saying there's I have evidence of it, but what I'm saying is I wouldn't give anybody $90 million with the expectation of nothing in return, but maybe these people are just really kind. They just love democracy. Disaster for Biden as more key Democrats demand he drop out after his, quote, big boy press conference, and Obama and Nancy Pelosi concede that it is, in fact, hard for him to beat Trump in crisis talks. Losing Barack Obama and Nancy Vodkanocker's Pelosi, not great. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and former President Barack Obama held an emergency talk on what to do about Joe Biden at the top of the Democratic ticket and did not come to a consensus. Neither are sure what to do, but they agree it has become much harder for Democrats to win in November since Biden's disastrous debate performance. Well, I think the reality is quite simple. They know that Joe Biden has, uh, you know, a very difficult uphill battle to regain Americans' trust that he's not completely senile. But they also know that they don't really have a vile, viable replacement for him. Uh, they So that's really, you want to know what they're not agreeing on? It's not that they, they're not disagreeing, in my opinion, that he's unfit to lead or that he's too old or that he's had mental decline. I think everyone who could see the man talk knows that. I think what they can't agree on is whether they'd let him take the L or they give it to someone else. There is nobody that they can replace him with that gives them any statistical better chance to beat Trump. So there's really no real reason to replace him other than to spare him the humiliation. You know, there's no reason to replace this man. Uh, We know they don't care about the country. It'd be one thing if they... If I thought, boy, they actually care about the country, this guy's got the nuclear codes, we should probably replace him. We know they don't care about that. You know, Harry Sisson having a meltdown last night. And look, 
I thought his his press conference uh, was very poor, but it wasn't as bad as the debate. And because, of course, he was reading off teleprompters the whole time and even had hilarious flubs like this. Joe Biden talking about his vice president, Kamala Harris. I wouldn't have picked vice president Trump to be vice president. But I think she's not qualified to be president. So let's start there. Now, let me, old person, explain this to you. The question that he was asked was, if Kamala Harris is on the top of the ticket, can she beat Trump? That's where he got the name Trump, and that's why he accidentally inserted it into his reply. However, that is a cognitive issue. How about this? Introducing um, everybody's least favorite charity case, Vladimir Zelensky, me the money. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine. By the way, remember when uh, the entirety of the mainstream media in America was printing article after article about how corrupt Ukraine was until we started giving them money to fight a proxy war against Russia? Yeah, Hot Pepperidge Farms remembers. Who has as much courage as he has determination. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. He literally called him President Putin. I can't tell you. Like, imagine, first of all, imagine you're Zelensky. You can't say anything because you're here to, you know, ball wash to get more of my money, okay? More taxpayer, American taxpayer dollars. He literally called him the guy he's in a war against. President Putin. He's going to beat President Putin. President Zelensky. Oh. I'm so focused on beating Putin, we got to worry about it. Anyway. No. Did somebody get, watch, I want to see his reaction. Did somebody, like... President Putin. Oh, you said President Putin again. I mean, again. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be. Again, here is Team Kamala. All right. I'm sorry, Biden team. The reaction to Biden's team when he called Kamala Vice President Trump, absolutely priceless. Watch their faces. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she's not qualified. They all looked at the ground. To be president. So that person covered their mouth. Right there. Number one. The fact is that <clears throat> the consideration. They, they know. They know. Look at the, They're like, oh, my God. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president. He looks at the ground. She looks at the ground. He puts his hand on his face. He looks at the ground. All four of them looked at the ground. I mean, it's sad. It's just sad. You know, I talked about this yesterday when I was live streaming with Melanie. Like, I'm still human, even though I spend so much time online. I'm human, but I'm working on it. Shout out Grandma's Boy. But... Like, it's hard for me to look. I mean, the guy, on one hand, here is a guy that somebody should be calling whatever hotlines exist to protect him against whatever's going on here. You know, just people taking advantage of the elderly. On the other hand, he's got his finger on the nuclear button. Like, he's got his finger on the button. So it's really hard to, like, you know, it, it makes me scared. As an American, it makes me extremely scared. If we look at Predict It right now, which is kind of like a betting odds site, like for um, the presidency, President Trump has a 60% chance. I don't think it's been that high before. Now, if you combine Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, that gives them 55 or 45 cents. So there are 60 to 45 dog in this now. I mean, the the market doesn't know what to do because he's just such a goofball. Like, nobody knows what's going on. Biden calls Kamala Harris Vice President Trump on top of an air-laden big boy press conference qualified to be president. Biden flubs lines, meanders, and makes excruciating gaffe in big boy press conference that leaves his re-election bid on life support. Now, it's my opinion, okay, you've got your own Democrats calling for you to step down. You have donors 
pulling a hundred million dollars saying, nah, dude, this isn't what we agreed to. It's now past the point where if you tried to replace him on the ballot, you could not even, you couldn't even replace him in Wisconsin. So if you replace Joe Biden, now you lose Wisconsin. Now, I would say, you know, losing Wisconsin does not guarantee losing the election. So you could still do it, but you would lose Wisconsin. I think that, you know, based on the trending data, Trump has like a puncher's chance in, in Wisconsin anyway. But if you tried to replace Joe Biden on the ballot with somebody else, you just automatically lose Wisconsin. The other two states, if I remember correctly, that is now too late for them to replace. He, Trump was going to win those states anyway. Um, you see this. Just one in four voters think President Biden could even stay awake through another Cuban missile, missile, missile crisis. I mean, don't you think like, hey, maybe we shouldn't even be like, we shouldn't even be doing this. This is like, let's take the election aside. And like the American people don't think this guy's fit to lead. So, you know, what are we doing here? His own donors are pulling their money back saying, hey, we don't want to. And of course, Candace Owens thinks, that the rebellion is fake. We are now watching a high school play. The CIA made the decision to switch Biden out. Everything else is performative. They want to convince the public that democracy is real. I mean, maybe that's true. <laughs> maybe that's true. They, I, I think that a lot of the things that people are saying definitely like lead me towards feeling like they've already made the decision to switch them out. My thing is like switching them out this late in the game virtually guarantees Trump wins the election. They have to be okay with that. And if they are, who are they going to sub in to try and beat them with? It's not going to be Big Mike. It's not going to be Hillary Clinton. It's not going to be Mich It's not going to be Kamala Harris. She can't beat him, uh, but it has to be. She has to be on the ticket. So he steps down. Kamala steps up. She picks a VP like Gavin Newsom, and they still lose. That's what we're looking at. So do they even want to do that? My guess is they're like, well, let's just take the L with Biden. Because if they do all that, the chaos goes downstream to all the other Democrat House and Senate positions where their own party uh, falls apart. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, I bet you we won't be seeing much of Joe Biden over the next couple of weeks. But that Democratic uh, National Convention is coming up and uh, it's looming larger every day.